Hi, I'm Bill St. John and welcome to Wine at 45. What we're going to do and learn about are winemaking districts that parallel the 45th degree latitude around the world. If you think about it, the 45th is where all the great wines of the world are made. Sort of like a necklace that rings the globe, strung along with pearls of very, very good winemaking districts. The 45th represents, literally represents, all the great things that, want, that, that vines need in order to make great wine. A temperate climate, a long growing season, and interestingly, and almost more important than anything else, a lot of swing between daytime and nighttime temperatures. And one place, par excellence, where that is true, is France. The French make their wine because they want to eat it. And what better person to teach us about that than a Frenchman who owns a wine store? Well, here he is. <laughs> yep, I'm here. Pierre Largent. Peter Silver. Oh, yeah. That's my uh, spy name. Is that your spy name? <laughs> and you're from France, and where in oh, France? Yeah. I'm from Paris. From Paris? Mm -hmm. How long have you been in this country? I uh, come here in 1970. 40 years? Oh, yeah. So let's take 40 steps and go look at the French section. Would you show us right that, here. please? So let's take a look at a couple of Rhone wines. Do you think it would be a smart idea to pick out a white first, a, a white Cote du Rhone? Yeah, right here. Ah, here it is, OK. That one is completely organic. From Perrin. And a rouge. That's interesting. Parallel 45. Parallel 45, that's yeah. the name of our program. That's, uh, yeah, exactly. C'est parfait, hein? Voilà. So why are, these, why are French wines in general really good with food? But with food, because uh, French, they have the food who can uh, complement those wines. Because you know, remember, steak and fry. Yeah. What are you going to open? I could do one. Go to Rome. This is perfect match for that kind of food. And but this is also good with things like fish and exactly. ch chicken. Exactly. And white meat. Exactly. Très bien. Voilà. Bien Monsieur. fait. <laughs> bien <laughs> dit. Ouais, 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 ouais. Now we're going to go somewhere else in the Rhone. We're gonna take a dive into these two bottles. On the left, I pour a little bit of the white wine, and here we have the red. All right, what I'd like to do is talk about how the blends of the individual grapes in this white wine and in this red wine are reflected in the wines themselves. This white wine is a blend of five different grape varietals, the three most important of which are Marsan, Roussan, and Viognier. You'll find them in almost every white wine made in the Rhone. Marsan and Roussan kind of give a nutty character to wine, and Viognier gives a nice silky texture. So let's just see ahead of time if, if that's in case the, uh, with the wine itself. Tastes like, smells like nuts to me, hazelnuts, almonds. Yeah, it has a nice soft texture as well. It's probably from the Viognier. This is a blend of Grenache, Syrah, and maybe a little Mourvedre. Again, grapes that you'll always see in Rhone reds, uh, especially from the south. Um, it should taste like dark red fruits. Maybe have a little black pepper in the bouquet. And uh, it ought to be kind of smooth and round with a nice bunch of heat from the Grenache. It gives you kind of a, almost a, a warmth. Perfect. Nice stout red. In fact, however, it's the kind of red that might be able to go with certain white meat dishes that we would um, otherwise serve white wine with. Let's say you take a piece of fish, a swordfish or a tuna fish, kind of an oily fish, and prepare it with tomatoes, onions, and green olives, like in the Veracruz fashion. That preparation is a little bit too steep for something as delicate as this white wine, but this red wine, with its warmth, would be a really great match for that. You might even want to chill it just a tad. The neat thing about wines from great places is that they speak to you of the place. They have a somewhereness to them. They tell you about the place from which they come. And these wines tell me about the Rhone. They tell me about the combination of power and elegance. They tell me about the beauty of blending different grape varietals to make a greater of a whole. One plus one equals three. And that's what you find in the great winemaking areas of the world, a sense of place. You'll find that along the 45th parallel. It's like a furrow all the way around the earth, marking those places where great grapes grow into great wine. Well, I was pretty happy today with our visit with Pierre and with our tasting of the wines, and especially finding one called the 45th Parallel. We could do more of this if you want to come back along with me, Bill St. John, as we pass through the wine route. Au revoir, mes amis.